I'm going to show you how to make this sewing machine mat from my book Sewing Room Secrets. It's a very simple mat to make. It's quite time consuming because I have incorporated quite a lot of hand sewing with the bias binding. But you're going to be learning techniques as a beginner sewer, such as quilting, basic quilting, adding bias binding and mitering corners as well. So there's not a lot of steps, although it does take quite a lot of time to make because of the quilting and because of the hand sewing. But I think you'll agree it's worth it. So let's take a look at how we make it. I've cut my fabric to 36 inches by 16 inches, but you can make your mat longer, narrower, wider, whatever kind of length that you like. And I've got two pieces of fabric, one for the top and a contrast of fabric for the bottom. In between these two pieces, I've sandwiched some Velizaline H640. So I've fused it onto the outer side and I've just used some 505 spray to stick the backing fabric down to the opposite side because that's only single sided fusible. And then on the top piece of my fabric, I've made a two inch grid simply by placing my ruler to 45 degree angle and drawing a line. I'm using a heat erasable pen. If you're using a heat erasable pen, make sure you do a, a patch test first because sometimes they can actually bleach or stain the fabric. Otherwise use an air or water erasable pen or, or even a chalk would be fine. And literally move your ruler along by two inches these can be as large or as small as squares as you like. And then turn your all around and go in the opposite direction, again at two inch increments, until the whole of the cover is covered in a grid. Then we're going to sew. So because this isn't a seam, I can lengthen the stitch on my sewing machine. So I've gone right up to three millimeters and I'm going to sew across each one of those lines. So it might be quite time consuming, but this is worth it because it gives your work um, texture and a, a really professional finish. So just carefully going over each one of those lines until the whole area is covered. So that's all my quilting finished and you can see what a what a difference it makes. It really does add another dimension and it also of course helps to keep all the layers of the wadding and fabric in place as well. So let's make the pocket. So we're going to turn one end over by five inches. But before we sew this down, I'm going to put some bias binding across one end. Now you can have your pocket on whichever end of the mat that you like. So I'm having mine on the right hand side. But if it works better for yours on the left, then pop it on the left. So I'm cutting a piece of bias tape slightly larger than what I actually need because I can trim it down to size afterwards. And for this section, we're going to open it out with the edge of the binding lining up against the edge of the fabric. Sew along that crease and then we'll fold it over and the rest of it's going to be sewn by hand. You could do all of this on the sewing machine if you prefer, but I actually like the look of the kind of the neat look from the outside uh, or the top side of the fabric because you don't see any stitches. So again it might be something that takes a little bit longer to do but it's worth it. So I'm literally sewing along the crease line. I'm not pinning with this, I find it much easier not to. Until we get to the end. And then I'm going to take a needle and thread, wrap the bias binding now over the edge and sew from this side. So although this is the top of the fabric, when this folds over it will be inside the pocket. So I want my hand stitches to be on the inside. Let's start here with my knot inside the seam. Fold the bias over and I want to sew so that it covers over the stitch line that I've already made. So I'm going to go into the padded fabric, the base fabric, out through the bias binding and then go back in again. So into the fabric, just catch a little bit of the bias binding and pull that through. And my stitches here are going to be about 
a quarter of an inch apart. They don't have to be too close on this section because it's the inside of the pocket, you're not going to see it. So don't make them massive, don't have them you know, an inch apart, but a quarter of an inch I think is a, is a good distance. And just sew all the way across. I'm not going all the way through the fabric, so on the outside you don't see any of my, my stitches. And when you are sewing bias binding on, have the thread the same colour as the binding, not the same colour as your work. Because this is navy blue thread, navy blue binding. You don't see the stitch on the binding, but because the stitch on the work, or on this section, goes inside, you don't see any stitches on the white fabric. So I'll just knock my thread at the end, snip that away, and then I can snip off the end of the bias tape where it's that a little bit too long. So that's the top of the pocket, folded up by five inches. So we'll have a couple of pins in there to secure it. And then I can make the divider. Now, in the book, I've made one dividing stitch line straight along the centre. But if you wanted to make smaller dividing lines, that's entirely up to you. So you can create as many pockets as you need. So maybe if you're going to keep pens in here, you could make smaller uh, pockets. Or you could just have one straight down the middle with two larger pockets. So I'll leave that up to you. So let's just do the one for now. So measure and mark this. It makes it easier. At the top of the pocket, we're going to reverse backwards and then forwards a couple of times, just to strengthen the seam at the top. And then sew straight down. And what I'm also going to do is to sew just along the edge, just to hold that pocket in place, before we put more bias binding on. And the same on this side. Doesn't have to be all the way down. And now I can take out the pins. And snip away that thread. So there's my two pockets. So now we'll put on the rest of the buyer's binding. So just like before, I'm going to sew the bias tape all the way down the side, across the top and back down the other side, but leave the end of this overhanging by about an inch or so, because that way when we come to making the, the hand sewing on the other side, we can fold the end of this under and make it nice and neat. So leave that overhanging, open it out. And we'll sew all the, down all the way down to the end, but we'll mitre the corner when we get there as well. So I'll show you how to do that too. So as I'm approaching the corner, I want to stop sewing this distance from the end of my work so I can feel where the edge of the fabric is here. I'm just going to mark that but you don't need to do this. This is half an inch so I want to stop sewing half an inch here. So in effect I've got a little half an inch box. Different people do this different ways but what I like to do is, dri is drive, is sew up to that line and then reverse back a few stitches, then cut off the thread and take my work out all together. So up to where the half inch mark is, go backwards a few stitches and stop. So you can see I've stopped here half an inch before the end. Then we're going to turn the bias binding around so that it goes around the corner like so so that the fold is at a right angle to the top and here's a triangle 
line at the edge here and I'm going to carry on sewing right from the edge of the bias binding where it's folded. So I'll just sew a little way and then I'll take it out to show you how it looks. So now when I turn the bias binding over and fold it around the corner, I've got a lovely neat mitered corner. And when I come to hand sewing on the other side, I'll do the same again, fold this over and create that lovely sharp mitered corner. So let's do the same with the next corner. So again, I'm going to stop half an inch before the end. I'm not marking it this time. You don't need to do that every time. Stop. Take your work out, turn this around the corner, make sure the fold is at right angles to the top of the mat and then sew. So there's my mat, there's my lovely mitered corners. So just like I did with the top of the pockets, I'm going to turn this over to the wrong side and hand sew this all the way around. When I'm at the start and the finish, I'm going to fold the end over, let's open that out, fold the end over and then wrap the bias binding around. So I get a nice neat end there as well. So there's my mat finished. I've got those lovely neat mitered corners and the ends of the bias tape here are finished really nicely. So all I need to do is to put this over the edge of my table, sewing machine on top, and we'll get sewing.